Bismillah, the next chapter Imam al-Ba'li rahimahullah ta'ala discusses Zakat al-Fitr and he says Zakat al-Fitr is an obligatory charity at the commencement of Ramadan's Fitr. Basically, uh, just before Eid begins, we're obliged to give a charitable contribution. And the reasoning for that, there's really two main purposes. One is that it serves as an expiation for any obscenities or foul language uh, that was used throughout the month by those fasting. And it also serves as uh, a way to uh, feed those who are impoverished or are in need. It is a designated obligation. It's a fard, as he mentions, distributed like zakat. And the distribution of zakat will be uh, expounded upon in a later chapter. He says, and its uh, obligatory nature is not foregone due to a debt unless it is demanded. Um, so much like um, zakat, debt um, does play a part um, in, 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 in determining whether zakat is obligatory or not. But for zakat al-fitr, um, debt is only considered if you are being requested to pay your debt immediately. Um, so if you do owe people or you do have a debt, but um, it has not been called upon, uh, then you do not consider the debt uh, in order to determine whether or not you are obliged to pay the zakat al-fitr. He says it's obligatory upon every Muslim to pay for themselves and on behalf of every Muslim under their care, so long as it is in addition to their obligatory spending of both the night and day of Eid, what is required of living quarters, servants, transports, books of knowledge needed to read and master, and daily clothing, like your work clothes, etc. Um, so basically discussing the obligatory nature of it and uh, who has to pay it, basically it must be paid on behalf of. So the head of household is going to take care of this charitable contribution for everyone they are obliged to spend on. Um, and then they're going to um, also consider their own possessions and their capability. So they're going to take their, their, their current assets that are needed, uh, and he mentions a number of those things, uh, what you need of living quarters, uh, servants or house care, transports, books of knowledge, and that's an indication as to the importance of seeking knowledge that you would actually consider this. Uh, those that are for reading, those that are done, uh, that are needed for mastery, and also your daily clothing, work clothing, etc. So if you have um, an excess beyond all of that, what is enough for the day and the night, then you use that to um, pay this zakat al-fitr. If there is not enough for everyone, so meaning everyone under your care, he should begin with himself, right? So you're going to pay your zakat al-fitr first, and then once you've paid yours, you're going to pay uh, zakat al-fitr on behalf of your wife. Um, your wife, obviously, you're responsible largely uh, for her care and for spending upon her. And from those obligations is to pay zakat al-fitr. Next is the bond servant in order. Um, and this, of course, is quite um, theoretical at this point in time. However, the bond servant is someone who is also under your care and you're obliged to spend on them um, regardless the financial straits. Um, so if you do have a bond servant who um, is in your care, you have to spend upon them and provide for them their necessities uh, in good times and in bad times. And in the event that um, your finances uh, take a turn for the worse and you can no longer care for a bond servant, then um, you have to um, you have to set them uh, free um, so as to not uh, oppress them and withhold any of their rights. After the bond servant is uh, your mother, uh, and the Prophet والسلام, indicated the importance of being um, uh, dutiful to the mother first, and then after that the father. Uh, the children follow after that because of the general obligation to spend upon the children and then those closest related in inheritance. So then you start to look at the Islamic system of inheritance, and of course they go in a certain precedential order, first, second, and third, and so on, and um, you will begin to um, uh, uh, pay zakat al-fitr on behalf of everyone that you can in that sequence. Um, it is recommended to give it on behalf of a fetus. 
Um, so an unborn child, it's recommended. However, it is not an obligation. It becomes obligatory uh, at sunset, sunset on the night of Eid al-Fitr, is permissible before it by two days, preferable on the same day before the prayer, disliked for the remainder of the day, impermissible to delay after it, and is obligatory to make up. So here is talking about when zakat al-fitr can be paid. So the obligatory nature of it um, begins at sunset on the night of Eid. So the last day of Ramadan uh, at Maghrib, when you break your fast, you are now uh, you are now on the night of Eid, right? As we know, the night comes before the day in Islam, and so it becomes an ob obligation at Maghrib time on the last day of Ramadan. Um, you can, however, prepay your zakat up to two days. So either one day or two days before it's permissible to distribute your zakat al-fitr. It's preferred, however, to pay zakat al-fitr the day of. So um, the day of before, that means in the morning time, before you actually go out to perform the prayer. And it was the prophetic practice to delay um, the Eid prayer for uh, Ramadan. Um, Salat al-Eid for the fitr is preferred to be delayed um, and the reasoning behind that or the wisdom is so that people would have ample time to go and distribute their zakat al-fitr. If you are unable to distribute it at this time, then you can distribute it throughout the remainder of the day, though this is considered makru, it is disliked. And it is impermissible to delay it further, meaning the day after. However, it must be distributed as it is an obligation that you are required to discharge. And delaying it further would obviously be considered sinful. Uh, how much do you pay or what is to be given? Uh, it consists of one sa'a of wheat, barley, dates, raisins, or dried yogurt. A sa'a is a dry measure. There is a very precise number, which has been mentioned previously. However, uh, generally speaking, one sa'a is uh, equivalent to arba'a and dad, uh, four muds. One mud is a, a double-handed scoop, if you will, something like this. So four times this amount, and of course, um, uh, considering the size of the average person's hands. Um, so you would give uh, four times that amount. And to be given, is um, things like wheat, barley, dates, raisins, or dried yogurt. Uh, basically, um, storable food which is measured. These are the two um, kind of qualities of the zakat al-fitr that's given. And if you do not find any of those, um, you, do not, you do not find any of those available, as he mentions here, he says the best is dates. And the dates, obviously, um, are also considered staple foods. They're also sweet. Um, they're easy to consume, and they're often most inexpensive, um, at least during earlier days. Um, and then raisins after that, then wheat, and then the most beneficial. So whatever is most uh, beneficial to those that are zakat recipients, and this may also play into culture, what is um, considered culturally appropriate, or the common foods that are eaten they should be given. If those are unavailable, then any storable grain will suffice. So if you don't uh, find uh, any of those mentioned available, wheat, barley, dates, raisins, or dried yogurt, um, dry yogurt is essentially taking uh, milk and then uh, cooking it until it becomes whey, like a whey substance or powder or a, a yogurty type substance. If you don't find any of that, then any storable grain like, um, like rice or lentils or, or um, you know, different, um, different types of grains, etc. He says, um, so, so there's one thing to note here before we move on to the last section here, and that is um, it's important to draw your attention to what you should give and note that it is foodstuffs. Uh, the official position of the Medheb is that money uh, giving um, an equivalent cash value of such items uh, will not suffice. So uh, you want to make sure um, to be very particular about and safeguard your zakat al-fitr that you give it as mentioned um, by the imam in its very specific nature.
The last line here of the chapter, he says it is permissible for a group to give their fitr to an individual and vice versa. So it's permissible for you to take everything that you have prepared for zakat al-fitr and um, for you to give it to one person or one family. And it's also um, permissible um, for a group uh, of people to give it to one person or for you to give it to a group of people. So, you know, you, you don't have to take a great deal of effort in trying to equally divide your zakat al-fitr among every single person that's in need. Um, so it's, uh, there is some leeway and some um, leniency when it comes to the distribution of zakat al-fitr. And that concludes the chapter.